From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Inspector Herniger of the Zurich Police, Herr Dollar. Oh, yeah, Inspector. I talked to one of your men last night. Yeah, when you report the murder of this man called Sebastian. Yeah, any line on this killer? Not as yet. We are somewhat at a loss as to motive. That I think I can supply. So? Sebastian apparently had information about the robbery of some uncut diamonds here in Zurich. So? Yeah, and he was willing to sell his information. But somebody called off the sale permanently. So find the man who lifted the stones and we'll have Sebastian's killer. Perhaps. You don't sound convinced. It appears quite possible, Herr Dollar, that Sebastian was killed by a woman. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Global Casualty, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Location, Zurich, Switzerland. Expense account continued. (laughs) Item six, one dollar even. Cab fare from the Polo Hotel to police headquarters. Inspector Herniger was a big man who moved and talked slowly. But one look at his very cold, slate-gray eyes told you his brain was moving a lot faster. Herr Dollar, I believe you told my lieutenant last evening that you were an insurance investigator. That's right, Inspector. And that you are in Zurich to investigate loss of a hundred thousand American dollars in diamonds at the airport a few days ago. Right. Well, uh, perhaps you had better supply me with such background as you may have. Gladly. The robbery itself, of course, you know about. A fight broke out at the airport. We know that it was, as you say, rigged. To create confusion. Yeah, and in the confusion, the courier who was carrying the stones was slugged. His briefcase was cut away from his wrist. Whereupon the assailants quickly melted away into the crowd. The exactness of their timing suggests that they were well organized and had planned the robbery in some detail. The next day, the company I'm representing got a letter from this man, Sebastian. He claimed to have information on the robbery and would help us recover the stones for a price. And you were sent to contact this Sebastian? Yeah. Or rather, I was sent here so that Sebastian could contact me. And did he? He did. But as it turned out, he practically had to stand in line. I am afraid I do not follow you. Well, first off, a very attractive young lady popped into my cab as I was leaving the airport for the hotel, asked to share the cab. Oh? Two blocks later, she had the driver stop, planted a kiss on me, and jumped out. Indeed. You Americans seem to work fast, Herr Dollar. Yeah, I'm afraid I can't chalk up the incident to my personal charm, Inspector. She left her purse in the cab, and I gather the idea was to make somebody else think she'd pass the diamonds to me. And who would this somebody else be? A guy who jumped me in the lobby of the Polar Hotel. He was pretty convinced I had the stones. Mm. And how would the dead man Sebastian fit in? Well, it's my hunch. Sebastian was a member of the outfit who stole them in the first place. He could have been trying to play both ends against the middle. How do you arrive at that conclusion? Well, look, we know there were several members of the group... Okay, so they're bound to take a big loss when they fence the diamonds. They'd be lucky to get half the value, which would be 50000 True. Split three or four ways, that would cut the shares down considerably. But if Sebastian could engineer the return of the stones and collect a $25,000 reward for it, he'd be way ahead of the game. And Sebastian was secretly negotiating with you. Yeah, behind a newspaper in the hotel lobby. He wanted me to meet him in his room later so he could talk. I went there. I found him in the bathtub dead. And he had given you no specific information as to the location of the diamonds. Only this, Inspector. A picture postcard? Uh Uh-huh. The Kleibach Inn. He told me Kleibach was a small resort village up in the Alps. I know the place. Uh, The card is addressed to Sebastian and signed by F. Gruner. He said Gruner was a friend of his. Perhaps the diamonds are at the Kleibach Inn. He said no, that this card was only part of the key to finding them. And he gave you no indication as to what the rest of the key to their location was? No, no, none at all. I gather that's what we were going to talk about in his room later. But somebody else apparently had different ideas. Yeah. Say, look, you you said over the phone that Sebastian's killer could have been a woman. Well, he was struck on the head from behind, but only hard enough to stun him. His death was due to drowning in the bathtub. Many times in our experience, women have chosen such a method. The woman, then, could be Ilsa. Yeah. 
Or perhaps one of Sebastian's gang who learned of his plans. Very annoying, Herr Dollar. Many possibilities. But nothing tangible. Well, I'm heading for that place on the postcard, Inspector. The Kleibach Inn? Yeah. At this point, part of a key is better than none. Expense account item 7, $16.20 American. Transportation and incidentals to the Kleibach Inn. The postcard didn't do justice to the place. The village nestled in a little meadow below some towering peaks. Oh, above it was the inn, a chalet-type building that looked out over the valley. And it was a peaceful scene. A few cows in the meadow with jangling bells. A lot of snow on the peaks. A sky of startlingly clear blue and a few wisps of clouds nudging the peaks. Inside, the inn looked spacious and comfortable with a friendly fire crackling in the huge fireplace and a friendly-looking fellow behind the desk. Welcome to the Kleibach Inn. Oh, thanks. Uh, please sign here. Okay. Thank you, Herr Dollar, is it? Yeah. You the manager? Yeah, I am Otto Friedrich, your host. Well, maybe you could help me, Otto. I am at your service. All right. Take a look at this postcard. Oh, what's the matter? That is not the good picture of the inn. I had some new ones made. You see, the lighting is wrong in this picture. The entire north wing is in the shadows. Now, in the good picture... Yeah, they... yeah, well, what I want to know is, uh, do you sell these cards here? Not those cards, no. I have the new cards. See, here is one. Now, see how much better... Well, how about in the village? Do they sell the old cards there? <sighs> yeah, I'm afraid so, in one or two shops. I have told them a hundred times I will give them the new ones if only yeah. they will. You see, it's... Yes, a... it's the lighting. You ever hear the name Sebastian around here? Sebastian. Sebastian, Sebastian. No need to memorize it. Just tell me if you've heard it, please. Is it a first name or a last name? There you've got me. Sebastian. No, I do not remember hearing that name. I'll be glad to check my register well, for how, uh, how about F. Gruner? He's the one who sent the car to Sebastian. Gruner. 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 Perhaps I heard the name in the village somewhere. Oh, I will see what I can find out. Okay, thanks. In the meantime, I hope you'll be comfortable here and enjoy your visit. Ski equipment is at your disposal. Thanks. But I'll enjoy my visit a lot more if I can find F. Gruner. Okay, okay, coming. Oh, I say, I, I'm looking for a chap named Dollar who's supposed to be occupying this room. I'm Johnny Dollar. You? Are you certain? <laughs> Reasonably, why? Oh, what a pity. Well, I'm sorry, old man, but there's not very much I can do about it. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. I, I, I say, you must forgive me. Must I? Well, I mean, well, you see, I used to know a chap in London named Dollar. Delightful fellow, really. Uh, incidentally, I'm Jeffrey Harris. We had ripping times together. How jolly for you. And when I heard that a chap named Dollar had registered here at the inn, well, naturally, I thought it must be old Bunny. Bunny? Yes, old Bunny Dollar. Oh, Bunny was just a dick nickname, you see. Well, that's reassuring, Harris. You know, there is a bit of a resemblance... You wouldn't mind a chance to be his brother or cousin, would you? No, no. Well, after all, Dollar's a bit of an odd name, and I don't No, I'm to... sorry. If you'll excuse me, I'm on my way downstairs. Oh, splendid. Well, so am I. Oh? <laughs> it's quite a coincidence, is it? Is it? Well, running to you in this way, I mean, uh, you're absolutely sure that you, you don't know Bunny Dollar? This, I can guarantee. Oh, what a pity. He's really worlds of fun. Oh, yes, I can imagine. Well, what do you know? Uh, what's that? Hmm? Oh, uh, nothing. I, I just wanted an old friend over at the bar. See you later, Harris. Oh, I see. So I can see your point, old man. Well, hello, Ilsa. Uh, oh. It is Ilsa Schaefer, isn't it? Why, you're the yeah, one. That's right. Johnny Dollar, the one you shared a cab with back in Zurich. <laughs> yes, of course. What a coincidence. Isn't it? Incidentally, Johnny, I want to thank you for turning my purse in. It was foolish of me to leave it in your cab. Just an oversight, huh? Well, yes, of course. I mean, you didn't by any chance leave it in the cab on purpose, huh? Well, of course not. Why would I do a thing like that? Oh, maybe so somebody else would think you passed something along to me in that cab, besides a kiss. Oh, that kiss. I suppose I shouldn't have been so impulsive. Oh, I didn't object to that. But I did object to a muscle man jumping me and acting like you had given me something. Oh? 
What was I supposed to have given you? You don't have any idea? No, honestly, I don't. Okay, we'll let that ride for the time being. Mind if I ask what you're doing here at the club again? Oh, this is a favorite spot of mine. I like to ski. Oh. You don't seem convinced. I really am quite a good skier, Johnny. Are you? As a matter of fact, I plan to go skiing in the morning. Would you like to come with me? Well, now, that might be pretty interesting. Uh, just a minute. I'll go check with Otto, see if I can borrow some skis. Be right back. All right, Johnny. Ah, Herr Dollar. And how are you enjoying your stay so far? Just fine, Otto, fine. Now, uh, look, about that girl over at the bar. Fräulein Schäfer. Oh, a most attractive young lady, no? A most attractive young lady, yes. Um, this seems to be a favorite spot of hers. I am very happy to hear that, Herr Dollar. I suppose she comes here often, huh? This is her first visit to the Kleibach Inn. You're sure about that? Of course. I would certainly remember a young lady like her. Yes, this is her first visit, but I hope it will not be her last. Don't count on it, Otto. So Elsa was lying about coming here often. That could mean she'd lied about a few other things, too, like leaving her purse in my cab accidentally. She might have been trying to make it look like she'd passed the stolen diamonds onto me and thus take the heat off herself and whoever she was working with. I remembered what Inspector Honegger had told me, that Sebastian's killer could be a woman. I went back to the bar. Did you arrange for the skis? Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm all set. Good. Tomorrow morning, then. All right, where? Well, I had in mind the North Slope, but uh, perhaps you would not like that. Why not? Some people consider it too dangerous. Oh, I don't think I should worry about the danger, do you? <laughs> After all, Elsa, I'll be in the best of hands. Thank you. I'm sure you'll take good care of me. I will certainly try to, Johnny. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, well, skiing's a strenuous sport, so is hunting. Put them together, and it's liable to kill you. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Roy Rowan speaking.